Hello, it's Jay here and welcome to another tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to make a start on the enemy movement within the run block. But um, we'll probably do this over the course of maybe three or four lessons, but let's make a start. And the first thing we're going to do is come up to the top here and we're going to create two new public floats. And the first one is going to be enemy run speed and let's make this equal to 4.0 F we'll close line off and into the comments defines our enemy run speed and the next one public float and this time it's going to be enemy turn speed and let's make this equal to 10f and we'll close the line off and as always straight into the comments defines our enemy turn speed and please always remember you can word the comments any way you like they don't have to be the same as mine so first things first let's come down here to the run block and I'm going to come right at the top here just below where the debug is but before the rest of our code so the first thing we need to do is call the apply gravity function we'll open and close brackets and we'll close the line off and again we'll go come straight into the comments and we'll say activate gravity function and I'm sure you remembered we created an apply gravity function in an earlier lesson so now we can just call that function here and then I'll come a couple of lines below and we'll start working on the movement itself so the first thing we need is a vector 3 and let's call this underscore direction to move and we're going to make this equal to and we'll open brackets and we'll say underscore player dot position minus the transform dot position we'll close brackets and we'll close line off straight into the comments so we'll say set direction to player's position minus enemy position so let's have a look at this line of code a vector 3 is a point within the three dimensional space we've given that point a name which is direction to move and it's going to be equal to well we want the player's position minus the enemy's position and then we'll come to the next line down and we'll call this function again direction to move and we'll say dot normalize with the capital we'll open and close brackets and we'll close the line off and again straight into the comments so we'll say keep enemy speed constant so let's go over this as I said a point in three dimensional space we're giving it a name we want to move towards the players position minus the position the enemy is in at that moment now as the enemy moved towards the player without using the normalize its speed would vary using this normalize it will keep it constant now you could comment out this line and at the end here you could say dot normalized with the small n so you could do it that way but I'm going to leave it like this for the purposes of this tutorial because I think it makes it easier for you all to see what exactly everything does so now 
we'll say direction to move and we'll say times equals and we want it to be equal to the enemy run speed we'll close the line off into the comments so we'll say direction to move is equal to enemy run speed and we'll come to the next line and I think this is pretty self explanatory except for the fact we have to use a, a times symbol here before the equals otherwise the script will recognize this as a float rather than a vector 3 so that's why we use the times equals rather than just the equal function so with that said let's come to the next line and we'll say direction to move again we'll say dot y is going to be equal to our underscore vertical speed and we'll close the line off there and as always straight into the comments so we'll say direction to move y axis is equal to vertical speed and in this instant our vertical speed will be zero as defined here this stops the enemy coming off the ground as it runs towards the player so basically it just creates a null value in the y-axis because we don't we only want to move along the x and y-axis as shown here so that's what that does and we'll come to the next line and again we'll say underscore direction to move dot y and we'll say equals zero we'll close the line off and we'll come straight into the comments so we'll say locks y position to stop enemy from falling over and we'll save that off there and that's what exactly what this line does we're giving the y value a zero value because if we didn't have that it would still allow some movement on the y-axis namely when the player would run into the enemy and it would make it as though the player could actually knock the enemy over and we don't want that we want the enemy to stay upright when coming into contact with the player so i hope this makes sense to you as always please read up on the unity website and if you have any questions please post them below and i'll try my best to answer for you and i think we'll leave it here for this lesson and we'll pick this up in part two and until then bye for now